Hello, Brighter Choice Second Grade Scholars. Today is Thursday, April 2nd, and this is ELA Mini Lesson Number 9. We are continuing to work on main idea and details in nonfiction texts. Today, we are focusing on a lesson called Topic, Subtopic, and Details. Your learning target for today is I can identify subtopics and details in a nonfiction text. In nonfiction texts, it's important to have an idea of the overall text structure and to know which information in the text supports which topics. Topics are sometimes even broken up into smaller parts or subtopics with information that just supports those smaller pieces. Sometimes these topics and subtopics are separated with headings or even subheadings. And when you keep a chart or an outline to keep track of the information the author is presenting, it's going to give you a better understanding of the whole text. And that's what we're going to be working on today. The text that we are going to be working with today is called Animal Armor by Laura Marsh. And it is a National Geographic Reader's Text. Let's read this introductory paragraph to the text to get a good idea of what our topic is going to be. It says, a cover of armor. These lions are hungry. They want to eat this porcupine, but they know to beware. The porcupine has body armor. Some animals have spines, others have hard shells, and some have thick, bumpy skin. Body armor keeps animals safe. So if we're thinking about the details that we learned in this introductory paragraph, remember an introduction is telling you what you're going to read about. And also if we think about the title, we could say that the topic of this text is animal body armor. So I would want to add that to my chart. Topic, animal body armor. Now, even though we're going to have different subtopics, the topic is always going to stay, stay the same. This text is about animal body armor. In some nonfiction texts, you could have more than one topic and more than one subtopic. But our topic for today is going to stay the same, animal body armor. Now we're going to examine some different subtopics we can look for headings to help us find out what those might be. And then we're going to record some details about each subtopic. So now I've got a next section of a text and it's called sharp spines. I can use this heading to predict that this part is mostly about spines, but let's read through it and see if that would be our subtopic about animal armor. Sharp spines. Would you want to touch these animals? Probably not. Each spine is sharp and pointy. Spines tell a predator to back off. Sharp spines are painful. Lots of animals have spines. A lionfish has special ones. These spines have venom. If a predator tries to eat the lionfish, venom will enter the predator's skin. Now I keep noticing that word spines keeps coming up again and again. I'm feeling pretty strong that this is our subtopic about animal armor because there can be different types of animal armor and spines seems to be common for a few different types of animals. Let's keep reading. Stay away from a porcupine. Its sharp spines are called quills. They shake and rattle when danger is near. The quills can stick into an enemy. Ouch. So if our topic is animal body armor, what would our subtopic be? What type of animal body armor did we just learn about? I'll give you a second to think. If you said spines, you are correct. For our subtopic, we can write, some animals have spines. Now what we want to do is look back to the text and find some important details about spines and animals that have them. Now there are lots of details in this section of the text about specific animals and their spines, 
but I want to try to pick details that can apply to most animals. Let me reread this first paragraph. Would you want to touch these animals? Probably not. Each spine is sharp and pointy. Spines tell a predator to back off. Sharp spines are painful. So this seems to be a fact about animals that have spines that applies to all of them. They're sharp and they tell predators to go away. That's one way that animals are protected by their body armor. Let's add that note to the chart. My detail about spines is that spines are sharp and tell predators to stay away. I took what the author said and put it in my own words. Let's keep reading. Lots of animals have spines. A lionfish has special ones. These spines have venom. If a predator tries to eat the lionfish, venom will enter the predator's skin. I need to think about this part and ask myself, is it only about the lionfish or does it talk about all animals that can have spines? I want you to think about that too. Is this section of the text just about a lionfish or about all animals with spines? This section is just about the lionfish, but I can say something about and all animals. It says lots of animals have spines. What are some examples of, sp of animals that have spines? We can see that fish have spines. Insects have spines too. Let's add that to our notes. The detail that I gathered about that subtopic is that many different animals have spines, including fish, insects, and other animals. Let's look back to this next section. Stay away from a porcupine. Its sharp spines are called quills. They shake and rattle when danger is near. The quills can stick into an enemy. Ouch. Now I have to think again. Is this a detail about all animals that have spines or just a porcupine? Hmm. I'm looking and from the picture and the words in the text, this section is just about a porcupine, but it fits with what we know about animals with spines. Spines are sharp and tell predators to stay away. And it also fits in with our detail that there are many different animals that have spines. Now that we've reached the end of this section of the text, we identified the subtopic was that some animals have spines and that we even found some details that go with that subtopic. This sounds really similar to when we talked about the what and the so what and noticing what repeats to identify the main idea. However, what was different is we're only looking at part of the text we would have to continue reading about different types of animal body armor to be able to talk about the main idea of the whole text. Yesterday, we focused on just the main idea of one section. I'm thinking in this next section, we might be learning about shells because again, the heading is strong shells. Let's see if that would be an accurate sub uh, subtopic about our whole topic, animal armor. A shell is another kind of armor. It protects an animal's soft body. Snails and clams can pull their bodies inside their shells. They can't move quickly, but they can hide. Many turtles can do this too. They pull their legs and head inside. A turtle has an upper shell and a lower shell. Both shells are hard and they grow with the turtle. The turtle's body is attached to the shell. Other animals have a hard covering over their whole body, even their legs. This kind of shell doesn't grow. When the animal grows, its shell gets too small. The animal sheds the old shell, then it makes a new one. This is called molting. There were a lot of different details in this section of the text, but we can agree that the text, this part is mostly talking about shells. I know that because the detail repeats. This is about a type of shell. This part of the text is about a type of shell. Here's another animal with a shell. And again, animals with shells. So I wanna add that onto my chart. Some animals have shells. 
Now what I would want to do is look back to the text to identify details about animals that have shells. Remember, I don't want to talk about just specific animals, but I want to think about what I can say about many types of shells. A shell is another kind of armor. It protects an animal's soft body. This seems like an important detail, similar to how we said that spines are sharp and tell predators to stay away. Something we could say about animals with shells is that shells protect an animal's soft body. Let's see if we can find some more details. Snails and clams can pull their bodies inside their shell. They can't, oops, they can't move quickly, but they can hide. This is a detail that's just about snails and clams. So I wouldn't want to add this in my chart because it's not a detail about all animals with shells. Many turtles can do this too. They can pull their legs and head inside. Oh, so it can be more than just snails and clams. So I could say that some animals can pull their bodies inside of the shell. I want to make sure I say some and not all animals with shells because that would not be true. Some animals can hide inside their shells by pulling themselves inside. I'm going to reword that so it's neater. Some animals can pull themselves inside their shells. Let's see if we can find some more details about animals that have shells for their body armor. A turtle has an upper shell and a lower shell. Both shells are hard and they grow with the turtle. The turtle's body is attached to the shell. So this is a fact about turtles, but I wonder if the same is true for other animals with shells. Other animals have a hard covering over their whole body, even their legs. This kind of shell doesn't grow. Ooh, so this is a different detail about shells. When the animal grows, its shell gets too small. The animal sheds the old shell, then it makes a new one. This is called molting. Hmm, I want to think about how I could write a detail about this that some animals have shells that cover their whole body and they shed their old shell when they grow out of it. But I also want to think about what I know about turtles, that their shell grows with their body. Hmm. Some shells grow with the animals body and some do not. Shells that do not grow will shed off. Sort of how a snake can shed its skin. Something else that I noticed was that these animals have shells that cover their whole bodies, but turtles and snails and clams do not, so I could add that detail as well. Some shells cover an animal's entire body, and some shells only cover a part of an animal's body. Now it's your turn to have a try. I'm going to read a part of the text, and your writing assignment today will be to identify the subtopic or what you learn about animal body armor in that portion of the text, and then to come up with a few details about that subtopic. So to get your writing set up and ready to go on a blank piece of paper, you can make three columns. Topic, remember, columns go up and down. Subtopic, and then a space for you to record details. You're going to want to make your space for the details the biggest space on your chart. Now our topic is still the same. We're going to be learning about animal body armor. 
I'm going to read another section of the text and it's going to be your job to figure out what the subtopic is. And then I want you to come up with at least three details. About the subtopic. Remember, you want to try to make your details general to all animals that have this certain type of body armor. Focus on what you can say about some or most animals rather than one specific type of animals. So let's get back to the text. Oops. Remember to use the heading to help you identify the subtopic and also listen for words or details that repeat that could tell you what this section is about. Super scales. When you think about reptiles, do you think of scales? Scales are hard, or excuse me, scales are small, hard plates on the skin. Lizards, crocodiles, turtles, and snakes have them. Scales protect their skin. Reptiles aren't the only animals with scales. Fish and a few mammals have them too. The pangolin is a mammal with thick, sharp scales. It can roll into a ball. This makes it hard for predators to eat. Here we can see the pangolin at the top. And down here, we can see how the pangolin is able to roll itself into a ball for protection. Scales don't only make the skin tough, they also keep an animal from drying out. In hot areas, water is hard to find. Animals with scales need less water to live. Scales have color. They form patterns too. This helps an animal hide from its enemies. Can you find the animals hiding here? Here is the end of the text, which I'll read to you. Armor all around. Lots of animals have body armor that helps keep them safe. If you could have armor, what kind would you choose? Wow, this sounds like this would be the main idea of the text or what the whole text is about. The animals have body armor that helps keep them safe. Now it's time for your writing assignment. Today you will be identifying the subtopic in this section of the text, super scales, and coming up with at least three details about the subtopic. Remember, when you're thinking about what your top, what your subtopic is, what about animal body armor did the text focus on in that section? Come up with at least three details about whatever you determine the subtopic to be. Happy reading, girls. Work, I'll see you again soon.